Mo Abudu, Africa's Queen of Talk, spends an hour with some of the world's most inspiring women, who include Christine Lagarde, the Managing Director of the IMF. Now we are very focused on more tailored program that really pay attention to the different classes of society and the different level of poverty. And the Board of Trustees of WinBiz, an NGO set up to improve the success rate of women in business. To be the catalyst that elevates the profile and influence of women in management and business. And we feature a few Amazons from our previous seasons of Moments with Mo. You don't want to miss it. Today we dedicate this episode to women making a difference. The odds are stacked against women on many fronts. They include economic participation, political empowerment, educational attainment, and health and well-being. Today we speak to showcase and celebrate women who serve as role models and those who are impacting our society positively. Our first guests today are Adiola Aziz, the chairperson of WIMBIS, and Fumi Roberts, a member of the board of trustees of WIMBIS. You are both welcome to Moments with Mo. Hello. And we're doing this episode in your office today, so thank you so much for <laughs> making this our, our home and our studio. You are going to pay for it. <laughs> you I are. promise I will. I'll settle my bills. All outstandings must be settled. So, okay. again, I want to thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to interview Christine Lagarde when she was in Nigeria. We're going to watch that interview later in this episode today. Um, but let's talk a little bit about how you empower women. And I don't think there is a Nigerian woman alive that hasn't heard of WIMBIS yes. and the impact they've made. Yes. But just break it down for us. Right. Um, WIMBIS started April 2003 okay. with 10 women and one man. We recognized that there were issues concerning women in the workplace and in business, mm -hmm. especially in the areas of leadership, mm -hmm. capacity building, and access for networking for growth. So as a result, um, we decided that the time had come mm -hmm. to set up this organization. But going back a step further, it's important to let you know that the idea of Wimbis actually came up by a man. Wow, yes. interesting. A man. Is, he, is he the one man? He's the, the, only, he's the one, one man. man the <laughs> and you had to allow him on. Oh, yes. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's his it, idea. It's his idea, it's, it's his initiative. Right. And so, how did it come about? Yeah. He lived in South Africa. Mm -hmm. His wife was working for a corporate organization mm -hmm. there. And he had an opportunity to attend a female conference mm -hmm. in South Africa. He was so driven. Mm -hmm. He came back home, was watching his wife, mm -hmm. multitasking, no support. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, she was constantly complaining. Yeah. He came back to Lagos after watching that, um, going for that conference, conference. and he said, something needs it's to be done happened. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He then approached his boss. Mm -hmm. Who was his boss at the time? You, you is a good guess, Omogula Johnson. Okay, all right. They both worked at um, Accenture. Accenture, fantastic. Walked mm -hmm. up to her and said, mm -hmm. this is what I saw. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Okay. How can we move this further? Sure. Omogula, of course, tapped in on it, realized, and she sees a good of thing. Of course, another she woman who has to multitask. He said, wow, Chichi, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Of course, she then went on, spoke to her sister, mm -hmm. Yewande, mm -hmm. and they thought, okay, that's two of us. Mm -hmm. How do we move this further? further. Of course, our only indefatigable Maury, mm -hmm. Salu, mm -hmm. was invited. <laughs> okay. And of course, they called her and said, okay, let's discuss this. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea. And in Maureen's kitchen. Maureen kitchen. Okay. Right. <laughs> they then had a meeting, mm -hmm. and one by one began to identify women mm -hmm. who were successful mm -hmm. in the corporate world, mm -hmm. as well as women who were doing well in the business world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we that's how you the got the trustees. And that was how, 
how, how it was born. Birth. But how yes. did you guys get it to that point of, okay, you've birthed it, you've had the idea, but now making it a reality? Of course, we needed to have a focus. Mm. Wimby's vision today is basically to be the catalyst mm -hmm. that elevates the profile and influence of women in management mm -hmm. and business. And business. Okay. Remember the, the catch catalyst word there yes. is the catalyst. catalyst. Changing. 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 Propelling. Yes. Inspiring. Inspiring. Impacting. Mm -hmm. Provoking. Mm -hmm. So Fumi, tell us about that. I mean, it's been a 10-year journey. What would you say have been the major things that you've achieved in those 10 years? Um, the major thing is the fact that the 13 of us that started are still together. together. I, mm -hmm. I met... And one man. And one man. <laughs> I've met some amazing women whom ordinarily mm -hmm. I would not have met mm -hmm. and who have impacted on my life. Right. Um, people see Wimby's as a glamorous organization. It lots is of not. work. It yeah. is a lot of work. work. Yeah. Our programs are highly subsidized mm -hmm. because we want to reach as many, many women as, as possible. possible. And in the last 10 years, we've reached about 70-something thousand women. women. Amazing. Through all our activities. Yes. It's not been easy, easy. at all, okay. but it's been but, worthwhile. So how do you sustain that momentum? I mean, as you said, it's... It, you know, this has been going for 10 years. But how do you find that year after year you have another Wimby's conference and there's another title, there's another theme, there's another topic. How do you guys decide on, okay, what's going to be the theme for next year? Or? We are constantly moving. Mm. Our thoughts are constantly, constantly working. Mm -hmm. At most times, we always have to look at what is happening in the what world. Is topical, mm -hmm. What is topical, topical in yes. Nigeria. And what affects women what in affects business women and in the corporate Absolutely. world. Sure. Like, the, la the, la the year before when we had a women's politics, mm -hmm. you know, we try as much as possible to bring in whatever it is we're going to talk about mm -hmm. to be in sync mm -hmm. with what is going on. Mm -hmm. For me, we'll tell you about what Wimbis is doing in that regard. Okay. So tell us about this initiative. Yes. It's um, called Board or? Women, Nigerian Women, women on, board. on Board. We actually haven't decided on the name. name. So okay. we have a concept paper okay. in place, but at the next board meeting, we're going to look at the concept paper. Right. Um, anecdotal evidence has shown that when there's gender diversity on mm -hmm. the board of a company, mm -hmm. the company tends to do better. better. Catalyst, an organization in, the, in Canada, mm -hmm. as well as McKinsey in England, did a study of Fortune 500 companies, and they okay. found that women, boards with more women, women were more successful. Were more successful. And so all our men need to hear that today. <laughs> absolutely. And the, the governance profile of those companies were higher mm -hmm. than those without. And what did some countries do? No one passed the law which says that 40% of board representation, uh, representation was focused on gender, there should be gender balance. And then Spain followed suit, France recently passed mm -hmm. theirs, the European Union is looking at it, and it's like there must be something in the reason why there must I What mean, about the implementation though? Because the, I, the I understand that there's also another 35% policy by the UN, UN yes. which is global. But nobody that's enforces it. Yes, that's but nobody enforces it. But these countries have. The, the countries are? Yes. Fantastic. In, in Norway, for instance, if you're unable to give a credible reason why you don't have a minimum of 40% women representation, your company is delisted. What about at what? Does it matter the levels? Or um, it's, have it's, they insisted it must be at all levels in the organization? At the board level. At board level. At board level. The thing is also that's important for you to state that Namibia in Africa is the only country who has actually also. Um, um, passed the law? Passed, no, not passed the no, law. They are, they're complying with the 30% UN for the Benj for the, the Benjamin 30%. Nigeria too has in some instances. Have, have we met any of the 35%? Yes, president actually has met 30%. 30 percent. He has? has? Okay. Yes, Interesting. Has. So you guys have measured. Nigeria in fact, measured. right now... Nigeria has measured, measured. measured. not <laughs> Wimbledon, okay. Nigeria has measured. <laughs> uh, right now we, we've paid a consultant to do a study for Wimbledon. Okay on the um, publicly quoted companies in Nigeria, mm -hmm. as well as at least 50% privately owned companies. We want okay. to know what is the representation of women. And women. Because whilst we are having this advocacy, we yes. need to, to understand where we are. With some tools. Yes. So that's going to be an advocacy totally, tool for totally. us. And um, it's, it's very strange because in the last nine months, mm -hmm. every major conference mm -hmm. has been focusing on, on the that. need for women to be yes. adequately represented. Yes. On the, there's going to be an institute, Women uh, Women's Board Institute, okay. and I, I wouldn't say much about okay. that. We'll but it's really about getting women on board, on board. At, at board level. level yes. Fantastic. And Fantastic. Um, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we want to create a data bank of 
capable, board ready women. Fantastic. So that Wimbis will be the first port of call for, call for a yes. that requires. So you're going to, to be like this agency, this agency for board members. For, yes, absolutely. Fantastic. So, I really look forward to, to, to when that happens. Uh, but I would also like to ask about how do you think that board level is one thing, but how do we just generally as women empower other women at all levels in our society? Information information is powerful mm -hmm. information is knowledge so it's about them having the access to that but what about those that don't have not access only, to information not only the information it has to be correct mm -hmm. it has to be timely mm -hmm. and it has to be also reflecting the changing trends in the economy in the marketplace for those who don't have the information right in terms of going down the ladder, mm -hmm. we are going to then, that is going to be an aspect for government to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because that would be outside the sphere of Wimbus. It has to be the local government. So how do we hit where it really counts? It's about advo advocacy and getting the message out at every level. opportunity. Level. And that's every the local government. government. They are the closest to the grassroots, mm -hmm. to the villages, yes. and we just have need to, get to the... also at some point mm -hmm. engage them. Yeah. Engage yeah. them. I, I mean like... Um, there was a, a program which SIO did recently, okay. right? And um, they actually were trying to get to women, mm -hmm. rural women, mm -hmm. how they can access funds. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually encourage SIO mm -hmm. to come on board mm -hmm. because they're engaging the local government mm -hmm. and they're telling those women what they can do for mm -hmm. themselves. Sure. And that is accessing funds mm -hmm. to the illiterate women, the microfinance sure. and sure. all of micro that comes yeah. into play yeah. into that. Yes. And of course they were going around, mm -hmm. engaging them, teaching them, mm -hmm. encouraging mm -hmm. them. And of course, some of them will come on board with it mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is somebody who wants to help me. Yeah. Or a bank. Mm -hmm. And what loans are they asking for? Yeah. Just what very small amount. Very small amount. But it makes such a huge it difference to their huge lives. Difference to mm -hmm. their, yes. you know. yeah. So, um, as I, I started this interview by saying thank you so much for the opportunity, you know, to have interviewed Christine Lagarde. Um, her visit, how would you say that visit has impacted upon us as women um, and how we can continue to empower women? I'll talk about myself first. I mean, I saw her and I just told Adela that I want the picture I took with her, the personal mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. I took with her. I'm going to frame it, I'm going to put it in my office. And I heard her speak yes. on that day and yes. I said, if I had a daughter, mm -hmm. this is where I want her to be. To be. And I, I see her as somebody that even if I can't talk to her on a daily basis, yes, if yes, I yes. look at her picture, mm -hmm. it continues to inspire, to inspire me. me. Anyway, we need to wrap up. Um, next 10 years for Wimbis. Where do we want to take Wimbis to? 10 years, mm -hmm. the, Wimbis has to be a household name, name. in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria. From your cameraman, mm -hmm. to the village man, okay. to the women on board mm -hmm. in Asuro, to mm -hmm. institutions, mm -hmm. When they hear Wimbis, mm -hmm. it is it will no longer be what is it will be like Coca Cola. It will be like Coca Cola. Brand. Thank you. <laughs> the Wimbis brand. Again, you've heard a lot for me had to say about women on board. Mm -hmm. That needs to be fully and totally, totally. We need to see it, yes, it would be lovely to see it, that work. Dream it, out it would be lovely to see that now. work. And we'll come back and do yeah. an episode on whereby we have seen the women you have put on board, Absolutely. where they were and where they are, we're already and what's become to of some them. International organizations will partner with us on mm -hmm. that program. Fantastic. More because we need to show it. People oh, need yeah. to see. More Absolutely. importantly, you cannot separate board women from politics. politics. So that's also that is also, also clear. Yes, yes. Yes. In the offering. Yes. Because for women to mm -hmm. come on board, mm -hmm. you have to start it from politics. Yes. Who will be the women who would pass those policies? Yes. yes. In exactly. Government? You have to you we have to be there. Politics. So and by God's grace, ten years we've done it. Yes. And Another you can do years, yes, you will do, do it. it. And Finally, you will keep doing it. How will we continue to sustain this? Mm -hmm. When we joined the board, we were in our forties. Mm -hmm. We're 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how old we are. Okay. Right? <laughs> so what does that, what does that mean? You need, to, you need to have succession, a succession, a succession plan. plan. Mm -hmm. Some New of board us trustees, are yes. beginning to mm -hmm. retire. Mm -hmm. We need to also adhere to the corporate governance rules. Mm -hmm. You know, we've already started the retirement mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. whereby some of us are retiring from the board, mm -hmm. but not outside the board. board. They're outside the board. Yes, but still so part of Wimbis. In an advisory yes. capacity. In an advisory capacity. 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 Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So for those who have retired, yes. they're not really gone. Yeah, they're, they're there, still there, watching, watching. ensuring yes. that the Wimbis vision stays is still true. staying true, true to yeah. itself. Well, coming up next, women that are breaking boundaries in Nigeria today. We'll be right back. I've been flying for 13 years. 13 years.
One country, a thousand memories. South Africa, it's possible. So welcome back. Please enjoy the next part of the show, Women from Previous Seasons of Moments with Mo, Breaking Boundaries. So please enjoy this, this piece with me. I've been a mechanic for 25 years now. I decided to impart my knowledge into other women because Nigerian women are strong. Training them is something that has been in me is ordained that this is what I want to do. So far I've done about 70 female mechanics in Lagos State and we give them employment. As soon as they are graduating we have written to competent companies around Lagos for them to have employment. I intend to see myself in a bigger place as in to do more than what my boss has done. She has empowered us, give us all our courage and support. For me to start doing what I'm doing, imparting my knowledge into other female mechanics, is for them to have a sustainable livelihood. Not just that, because I believe that they will have a lot to benefit from it, and that will make their future so bright. Whoa! Our lady mechanic joins us with her team, okay. engineer <coughs> Sandra. With your team here today, Mariam, you're welcome, Thank bright. You. And Janet. 25 years ago, Sandra, you woke yeah. up and you said, I want to become a mechanic. Yeah. Uh, then it was like a taboo. Mm. I started 1985. It was through dream. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ teaching me how to fix cars. Okay, so and Jesus Christ taught you, yeah. but you had more training than that. Yes, okay. after that. After that. Yes. Okay, but basically the dream came that this is what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, it was ordained that this is what What's, I wanted okay. to do in All my right. life. And okay. there was no member of my family that was doing this, right. not even my parents. But when I started disturbing my father, this dream proceeded for like one whole week. I started disturbing my father to take me to a garage. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, no, you can't do it. NG will fall on you. No, mm -hmm. women are very afraid. Exactly. And what kind of bad name are you bringing to, to this family? family? That you want to become Then it was like a taboo. taboo yeah. And then I was in secondary school. Mm -hmm. So my friends, they, when they heard about it, it was like, no, she cannot be part of us mm, anymore. Mm, mm. Everybody was putting me in cartoon in school, talking bad about me. Wow. I don't know what wow. I want mm. and all that. But that did not discourage me, but yeah. put more inspiration into me okay. for the choosing career I have wow. to do But in at life. 14? At 14, I started going to the garage yeah. to learn how to fix cars. Okay. At the age of 20, 1920, that mm. was when I started my own company okay. called Sanders Car Care. When I started finding women on the street having tire problems, <laughs> having problems with their vehicles, afraid of hoodlums to cash up with them, calling a man the driver, to come and help them, calling their husband. <laughs> In my car, I had a whole lot of it. was a mobile workshop. Okay. I started helping women. Fantastic. That's what brought about, about the Lady Mechanic Initiative, Fantastic. which is a non-governmental organization. Wonderful. I can come on one of your workshops and learn the basics of being able to to do certain things in my own car. Very well. We do that a lot with companies, okay. train okay. drivers, drivers and for uh, car, okay. Uh, okay. car uh, fault and ratification, okay. diagnostics of vehicle exactly. for them not to stuck on the road, what yeah. you can do before you move the car, car. to the garage. We are sure. doing a lot for women. Fantastic. And the training is free. Okay. The trainees, they are being well, paid monthly salary. Okay, today. so you are all working with Auntie Sandra here, yeah? Yes. Now, Bright, you look so cute there. You look so fragile. Can you even lift the bonnet <laughs> of a car? Huh? Yes. How old are you now, right? 17. You're 17. So how, you just said you wanted to become a mechanic. How, tell me, how did it happen? At first, I wasn't that encouraged. But when I got home, I was just like, uh-uh. I was like saying to my dad, how will you take me to learn mechanic? So it's your dad, dad that wanted you to become a mechanic? Yes. Oh, wow, you have a really interesting dad. Then I was just like, ah, well, since somebody else has done it, mm -hmm. I can also do, do it. it. Okay. So she spoke to me, she mm -hmm. encouraged me. Mm -hmm. She was just like using some of the ex seniors as an example. Sure. So I was encouraged. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. Janet, I know your story is a little bit different. You actually traveled abroad, saw some of the not so good things that some of our girls were doing. And you came back and decided that you wanted to do something where you could contribute and give back. Tell us a little bit about your story. Well, um, let's say 2004, okay. I heard about the lady mechanic. Okay. So I went there. Mm -hmm. I was discouraged. I said, no, 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 don't you want to become a mechanic? A fine girl like you. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Don't worry, come, let's travel. 
So they said, uh, sin is believing. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, I saw what they are doing. I said, no. The sex said, trade and all of that. And you basically all said. All sort of things. So I said, no, I can't be part of this. this. So I came back. Mm -hmm. When I came back, I said, yes. I, I forgot about the whole mechanic issue. So there was a day I listened to her on radio. I said, yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. this is what I want to do. So I went there, mm -hmm. and this yeah. is my second year too. Your second year, congratulations. And Mariam, you actually, you're the coordinator, I understand, for Lagos. Now that's a big responsibility. So tell us a little, a little bit about your work and what you do. It starts from creating awareness to the girls, okay. so their graduation, you know, giving them the orientation, induction, taking them from the year one, the year two, and the year three. So it's a three-year course? Yes, it's wow. like an academy. It's wow. an academy, it's an academy. On, academy. on its own. Wow. They have to go through a series of training for the year one, okay. and then more trainings in the second year, year and finally to the third year. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. So the lady mechanic herself, when the ladies come and when the men come, are they all happy for you to fix their cars? They don't feel like, can a lady really fix my car? Uh, some just come to try. Okay. Some just see, maybe they've seen me on TV mm -hmm. or read about the lady mechanic mm -hmm. and they want to come and see, can you really do it? Yes. And they try me, they are amazed. All right. As I'm sitting here, we have a lot of companies we mm -hmm. work for, like World Health Organization. We are in charge of their Fantastic. vehicles in Lagos. Fantastic. We work for CNN, we work wow. for BBC office wow. and all this. Yeah. It's not just the roadside mechanic. mechanic. You cannot just be a dropout and say you are going you to are the trained. garage. It's a three-year course. This is a training school. Well, it's the Inspire Africa Foundation okay, would like to commit to training two people. Maybe we'll put something on our website or you know, on our Facebook to say if you want to become a female mechanic, we're going to pay, we'll sponsor two people. Okay. That's what we'd like to do, yeah? I think you're doing amazing work. We congratulate you. you. And, um, you know, please just keep going for it, girls, Thank and you. make us proud, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, stick around. We're defying gravity next. I'm a pilot with Aero Contractors of Nigeria. I have uh, flown for 13 years, and I'm a captain on the Dash 8. Uh, what I enjoy most about the profession is the adventure of being in the skies and um, experiencing the thrill of being carried by the winds, really. Being a woman in this industry, in this day and age, isn't so extraordinary anymore. However, being a married woman nurturing a family is extraordinary. When I came in, I had no female mentors whatsoever. I had only the male colleague to interact with and to work with. And that's what makes this flight special. It's the first time I would be in a cockpit with a woman next to me. It means Nigeria has come of age and it's, it's beautiful. And the lady pilots and their crew are here. You're all welcome. Thank you, Mark. Captain, I don't know, I'm just totally inspired today. So Bolaji, I'm going to call you Bolaji, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Wash, you're welcome. Jennifer and Kate, Thank you're you. all welcome. Thank you. Today we're talking about, you know, we're, we're, we're making sure that those boundaries that we set for ourselves as women, how can we remove them? You woke up okay. and you said to yourself, I want to become a pilot. I know you said, mm -hmm. we're talking before the show started, and you said as young as seven. I've been flying for 13 years. 13 years. Um, wow. I grew up in a family of a few Air Force officers, okay. and so I was exposed to aerodynamics at a young age. Okay. And uh, with very supportive parents, okay. uh, the dream was realized. And with a very supportive spouse, okay. the career Because <laughs> that's really has important flourished. as well, yes. isn't it? Yes, that's a, very important. To have a supportive spouse. Yes, yeah. for those yeah. who want to be married and uh, raise a family yeah. alongside mm -hmm. this profession, the spouse is very yeah. important. Yeah. Is it really hard to become a pilot? It's not hard. It's a skill that you learn, okay. and over time it becomes second nature. Really. But you're up there in the air. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thrill, really. Wow. I'm just, I don't know what to say, guys. I am just bowled over. Wash, tell me a little bit about your experience and how you got into this. Well, I, I've been flying for 11 years. 11 now. years. And, um, I'm a doctor by profession. A doctor. Wow. Then, so from being a doctor, you now decided to become a pilot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was quite challenging <laughs> to <laughs> to venture into things, and many people are like, "You are a female. Mm. You didn't practice uh, finish teaching our kids, mm. and you're going into flying." Mm -hmm. 
and when I went into it I just know that that was what I wanted and I've always dreamed about it and I put in my best and I had all the support from my family all the support from mm -hmm. the government all mm -hmm. the support even when I came in that's why I went came to work for the aero contractors mm -hmm. because I had lots of friends there and wow. that I had the encouragement wow fantastic and then to our beautiful crew executive, what's it like? Is there, is there a difference between working with a male pilot or a female pilot? I mean, or would you say that it, it just doesn't matter? It's just it a pilot. It doesn't matter. Okay, in so the, the fact that they're ladies, there's no, no extra, no, no, no. no extras no. there. It's like in airway, that's like family kind of. Okay. When I'm talking to her, Adolf, unofficially, yeah. I call her, her name Bola Jim. Yeah. But when you're flying, it's when you're captain. Flying, I go back to the official and I call yeah. her captain and I call her. Post officer. But, but when you, we get on board and they see a female pilot, how do passengers react? Because do they think, ah, oh, can she oh, really fly this plane? The women before me uh, suffered some form of discrimination. Against, from passengers or from other crew? Passengers. Wow. <clears throat> from passengers. Uh, some people would come into the aircraft and go, is that a woman? Mm -hmm. I'm not going I'm anymore. I'm not going again. You know? Can you but I have never experienced that, you know. Wow. People come and go and they say, is that a woman? Are you flying us? Do you really fly? Hey. <laughs> and, and that's it. And yeah. I tell you, not just Nigerians, mm -hmm. expatriates yeah, as well. Yeah. And sometimes I'm shocked. I mean, don't you have women in, your, in country? your country that fly? But yeah. all over the world, I guess there are just too few mm -hmm. female pilots. So it's... it's wow. uh, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm just like, wow. It's I could still just be a looking at you guys all day. <laughs> But just words of advice for anyone that wants to go out there and be a pilot. If they're watching at home today and they're thinking, yes, I want to become a pilot, what would you say to them, Palaji? Women must know that there are no more boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. you know, like can, years yeah. past. Almost every woman has this dream of having a home and kids. Yes. Well, in this part of the world, it's achievable. But mm -hmm. know that there are certain sacrifices that you will make. Mm -hmm. And if you toe that line, it will take you twice as much time as your male counterparts to build your career. Yeah. But if you're determined, you'll achieve determined, it. You well, you guys have definitely yes. done it. You're living proof that it mm -hmm. can be done. It can and be you've done. got a family, so it can kids. be done. Yeah, right. great, great. Well, I want to say thank you, Balaji, Wash, Jennifer, and Kate. Thank okay. you for coming on and inspiring us today. We truly are inspired. You're most welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. So, wow, what did you guys think? Female pilot, I mean, I just, when she was on the show, I just said to myself, I mean, I, I just kept staring at her and thinking, you fly a plane. Okay, okay, okay. We fortunately had her at our last conference as a speaker. Mm -hmm. She spoke under the um, opportunities, or I can't remember what her name she spoke okay, 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 okay. And um, before she came on, I actually said to her that you must come dressed in your uniform. Uniform, yes, and with her boots. Uh, <laughs> when she came, honestly, um, she articulated she did. How and she's she did very it. articulate very very yes. articulate how she did it yes and why she's doing it yes. and now she's a mom pilot she's the first yes, yes. mom pilot. pilot yes and yes. she's just done that industry honestly she's so, so proud so proud because she's definitely gone into a field mm. where you would never have contemplated ah. we're actually trying to get her on to be uh, a mentor mentor you know mentor. because yes. if she's there a lot of our young they, you know, they decide that want to go into that, um, yes. business, totally, you know, totally, you know totally, that they've got totally. somebody to hold their, hold hands. their hand, and it can, be done. It, can, it can, can be done. be done. She's done it as a single woman, yes, as a married woman, woman and, as, and a mom, as a mother. As a mother, wow, fantastic. <laughs> and then Sandra, the female mechanic. You know what it reminded me of <laughs> when I first got married and got my first car. If I had a flat tire. I packed the car and called my husband and I said, to come and change it for me. <laughs> I had absolutely no clue what to do. And I can see a yes. woman yes. Who, is, who is a mechanic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's inspiring. Inspiring, inspiring. We thank God, we thank God, we thank God. So really, all these women are break, breaking boundaries. A female absolutely. mechanic yes. and a female pilot. pilot. Amazing, amazing. What next is a female going to do? President. Cool. Absolutely. That's it. <laughs> first African. Absolutely. First African. No, we have. No, we, have. We, we have. We, we have an African. Yes, we yeah. have an African already. Yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes and yes, in yes, Europe. Yes. 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 We've covered all well. Yes, yes. We're doing well. So coming up next, a moment with Christine Lagarde, Managing Director, IMF. What I want is an IMF that is credible, mm -hmm. that is independent, mm -hmm. and that tells the truth.
One country, a thousand memories. South Africa, it's possible. So welcome back. Let's meet Christine Lagarde, the first female managing director of the IMF. Moments with we'll caught up with her on her recent trip to Nigeria. Let's take a look at this together. Madame Christine Lagarde, it is a pleasure to have you visit our country. It's a pleasure for me personally to have this opportunity to interview you. You're most welcome to Nigeria. I will tell you something. It's a reciprocated pleasure <laughs> on both accounts. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, your appointment has been fairly recent. Yes. And considering that it's been fairly recent, um, you visited us you know, very quickly within that time, time frame of, of, of you being appointed. Why would you say that you have decided to come to Nigeria at this point? The IMF has 187, 187. members, 187. And I decided to come to Africa very quickly and to come to Nigeria in particular because, number one, Africa is a very critical continent for the economic development, yes. for growth in the world. Certainly. And Nigeria is the most populous, mm -hmm. the most, um, I would say, full of promises and opportunities as well as challenges. Yes. We do not have what we call a program in place. In other mm -hmm. words, the Nigerian authorities, your president, mm -hmm. its government, mm -hmm. are conducting their economic policies on their own. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything to do mm -hmm. with the economic policies that are decided. Okay. But it's a fascinating country mm -hmm. and one that really was the ideal place to start this dialogue yes. and to deepen the partnership between the IMF and Africa. Absolutely. And when you talk about deepening the dialogue, and you know, that relationship, what are the key things that you think you would like to see happen? What sort of relationship would you like to develop with Africa and with Nigeria in particular? A relationship of trust. Mm. To me, that's the most critical uh, component of the relationship. Mm. Historically, the IMF has had a little bit of baggage, you know? Yes. And I think we should get rid of those baggage mm -hmm. and we should establish a relationship on the basis of trust. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to listen, to understand what the concerns are, mm -hmm. what the policy will be, what the governments want to do for mm -hmm. the future mm -hmm. of their country, mm -hmm. how they're going to develop employment, mm -hmm. how they're going to create value, yes. how they're going to move up the value chain. Mm -hmm. All of those are critical, not just for the people of Nigeria, mm -hmm. not just for the people of Africa. It's mm -hmm. critical for the world yeah. because it is such an important piece very of the big jigsaw puzzle so. that is the global economy. Totally. But what do you think are some of the realistic steps that we can start to take so that, you know, what are the quick wins? What are the things mm. we can do quickly? Well, I'll give you two examples uh, concerning Nigeria in particular mm -hmm. and taken in the financial sector. Yes. The banking sector was not in the best conditions mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the determination of your government, mm -hmm. thanks to the skills of your central bank, bank governor, yes. but also thanks to a little bit of technical assistance mm -hmm. that the IMF was able to provide okay. uh, your authorities mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. the banking sector has been restructured. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of um, happy bankers, I bank suppose, yes, yes. happy banks, yes, yes. and not so much of the, yeah. of the, of the, the, the bad legacy of uh, uh, of everybody and their grandfather being a banker. Absolutely. Yes. To become so a that, banker that's now. That's one yes. example yes. where we have been able to help. To help. Provide technical assistance, assistance to enable the local authorities, mm -hmm. the central bank governor, mm -hmm. to do what he and they thought they had to do. To but do. we gave the assistance. We totally. gave the technical expertise assistance. that we okay. have. Second example. In the whole of Africa, there are many entrepreneurs. There are many women entrepreneurs. Totally. They need funding. Yes. They need access to money yes. and to do that there are multiple ways to do it at the very beginning you have the micro credit yes. then you have the mesa credit yes. and then you have access to financing and access to the market mm -hmm. now clearly those are areas where we can also provide technical assistance mm -hmm. to actually deepen the access to market and make sure that the, those women who set up yes. you know they small business to begin with when they grow they up grow. in the business yes. they can access public money uh, well they can access money that mm -hmm. is available publicly that is you know totally, the market totally yeah. and and 
I, I think it's great to sort of help women when it comes to microfinance, but I think there are also a number of women that are looking at playing in slightly bigger leagues. Mm -hmm. And I find that in our environment, it is sometimes challenging to get funding um, for female entrepreneurs that may come to the table with rather large projects. So it would be really nice to see if there's a way in which, yes, it's great to help those at the grassroots, but there are also women, I'm sure you saw a lot of them yesterday, yeah. who are running you know, million dollar businesses. Yeah. They're turning over you know, millions of dollars every year. But you know what? It is hard the world over. Mm. There are not, there, totally. I, I don't think there is a single country that I've, I've visited mm -hmm. where people have said, it's easy. Easy access to money. To money yes, you know, yes. uh, bankers welcome women yes, as much yeah, as they exactly, welcome men. Yes. Not true. So it's a challenge it we all true. face. It's a challenge it's a, it's that a we global women challenge. all face. Yes, it's a global and challenge. And I was very interested to hear that you gov the governor of the Central Bank, Bank of Nigeria yes. yesterday, when sort of prompted by us and sort of mm. engaged in the discussion, yes, yes. Uh, considered the possibility of having a special instrument available for the financing yes. of SMEs totally. led yeah. and, and set up by women. by women. That would be a terrific we, They've move. said they're going to hold into that at the next Bankers Committee meeting. I'm going to make sure that I, if I have to sort of send a couple of messages to say please, because I think it's yeah. so important to empower Absolutely. women, we can really, really make such a difference. But what's been the highlight of your trip so far? I mean, you've been to oh. Abuja, you, you're now in Lagos. Um, what's been the highlights, would you say? First of all, I, I was very, very privileged to have a meeting with your president. We spent an hour together. Nice. He was extremely attentive to what we were all saying. Uh, he gave his vision. Okay. But more importantly to me, he really empowered his team. Mm -hmm. And it was really fantastic to hear him say, whatever those ministers have told you, mm -hmm. I support them. Wow. They are my team. Yes. They implement the policies that we have decided collectively. Totally. You can trust them because I trust them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a very strong message by totally. a political totally. leader. It is totally. somebody with empower, confidence, somebody who is team. able to say, yeah. they are my team, they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. I trust them. Mm -hmm. That was a very strong yeah. moment, actually. Okay, and obviously you've met so many women since you've come here. What yeah. do you think of our women? Well, <laughs> last night dinner was exceptional. Exceptional yeah. because of the the vitality, the energy, mm -hmm. the talent. Mm -hmm. We had bankers, we had people in academia, we had uh, in people in the yes, industry. We had, the poet with we the had beautiful a wonderful poem. Yes, uh, yes. poet, a, a former evening. lawyer, by yes, the way. Yes, uh, yes. yes, and a chemist but, too. Yeah, yes, yeah. Amazing. Ex extraordinary. Yes, yes. Extra yes. Very beautiful women, mm -hmm. but not beautiful just because they looked beautiful. beautiful but from they the were inside, beautiful from, inside. from inside, yes, and that yes. was that yes. was very moving. So the future looks bright for Africa. I, wanted, I have a quote for, um, here from you, something you said ahead of your trip. You said, African economies have made significant progress over the last few years. However, the world economy is in a critical phase. And in these difficult times, we have to make sure we all work together to, to tackle the challenges facing all IMF member countries in Africa and around the globe. So considering that there is a global recession, considering all the various challenges that the world is going through at the moment, how much airtime, realistically, how much real attention time do you think Africa is going to get? Because the entire world is in some sort of financial crisis. No, I think Africa is going to have a lot, a lot more air attention mm -hmm. paid to it. Why? Because I don't think that we're in a, in a global recession. Some parts of the world are heading towards recession. Okay. But if there is one part of the world that is not heading towards recession at the moment, uh, it's Africa. It is? If you look at the growth rate, yeah, a recession is defined as two successive quarters of okay. negative growth. Okay. If you look at the growth Technically, of... Technically, okay. Yeah, yes. consecutive and negative. Negative right? growth. You, you have to be minus, you have to okay. do less than the previous okay. quarter. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Africa at the moment, it's mm -hmm. growing at a pace of about 5 to 6%. Mm -hmm. So it is actually cruising uh, reasonably well and mm -hmm. certainly ahead mm -hmm. of the advanced economies. Now, okay. it has a lot of ground to cover. It's not starting from the same base. Mm -hmm. It is in development. But that's not where this, the recession lies. lies. The, the, the core of the problem is actually in, in advanced economies, and particularly in, uh, in the core of Europe at the okay. moment. So that's where the solutions so have to come have from. To come from. But 50% of our population still live probably on less than a dollar a day. Yeah. Now, those numbers are criminal in yeah. that how can anybody live like that? 
how do we improve those odds? Because my program goes out to ordinary people. It's not a political program. It's not a hard news hitting program. It's a program that basically just discusses some of the challenges we have as Africans yeah. um, and how can we solve some yeah. of those challenges. Also celebrating people that are doing great things at the same yeah. time. Um, but how, anybody watching tonight that may be living on less than a dollar a day, how do the odds improve for him? Well, what governments need to do in situations like that is to focus on what is going to help those people out of poverty. And point number one, a lot has already been done, okay? It, start, it, it was worse, it's getting better. So the, the direction is good. The priorities of the government are the right ones. Focus on health, mm -hmm. focus on education, focus on, on economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. Those are critical uh, priorities for the people. Now for the countries, there are a few things that need to be also addressed as well. And that includes power, mm -hmm. the right use of power, power. And second, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If you have roads, if you have transportation, and if you have people who receive a, a bit more education, a bit better education, who have better health because it's provided at, at, at decent cost or sometimes at no cost when people have no money, yes. that really brings the population forward mm -hmm. and towards a goal which is a better life. And I think also probably creating industries and, and creating jobs would also help. Because I think a lot of people that are living on less than a dollar a day basically have no form of income. True. Um, but, but to get a job, you yes. need to have some education. Sure. Yes. So education is, is the key. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has huge resources, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's oil and gas, mm -hmm. whether it's farming land. Mm -hmm. It's a question We're of using those resources, resources to, in a to, smart to, to way so that it's change. a sustainable development yes. for the country. We spoke a little bit earlier about IMF programs that have been heavily criticized. Mm -hmm and some of the austerity measures we've seen introduced over the years by the IMF. Mm -hmm. And you said that under your watch, you are committed to ensuring that those measures change for the good. What I want is a relationship that is built on trust. trust. What I want is an IMF that is credible, mm -hmm. that is independent, mm -hmm. and that tells the truth. Yes. Those are critical components to, to provide value, mm -hmm. to give our membership what they want. Totally. But obviously we cannot have ju just austerity programs that are, you know, sort of one size fits all mm -hmm. and it applies to Nigeria as it would apply so. to uh, Italy, for yes. to, to, Greece, to Greece, for instance. Yes. And uh, it's a question then of, of really being exactly mm -hmm. in tune with what the country is about, with mm -hmm. what the population expects, with what the government can do. Mm -hmm. And then again, based on the truth, based on the right analysis of the situation, mm -hmm. then offer the set of policies that will be best. For instance, historically, you know, 20 years ago, the IMF was not particularly bothered about making sure that the less privileged classes of society mm -hmm. would receive better treatment. Mm -hmm. Now we are very focused on, on more tailored program that really pay attention to the different classes, classes of society of and the different level of poverty. poverty. Fantastic. Well, my last couple of questions is going to focus on us as women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's anything that we lack, and it's not just in Nigeria, but globally, it's probably economic participation, economic opportunity, political empowerment, educational attainment, and health and well-being. Mm -hmm. How do we get our leaders to take us seriously in that regard? I think what you do, what Minister Ngozi does, mm -hmm. what many strong women in Nigeria do, mm -hmm. setting standards, mm -hmm. showing that you can do it showing that you can bring more to the table, mm -hmm. showing that you are diversity and that you embody diversity, mm -hmm. that is terribly important because it starts from you know, setting role models and demonstrating that we are not a threat, we're not a danger, mm -hmm. we are improving the situation. Yes. Because very often we're perceived as, as trying to take the boys' way. positions. Yes. No, yeah. we can have our, our positions, we can bring our values, we can bring what we have which is different yes. without jeopardizing anybody yes. next door. Yes. So I think that's a very important thing. Yes. And then we have to help other women. Yes. That is something that yes. we, we women have, have to, to do. do. We need to set standards, but we need to make sure that others have the ability to do it. together with us, yes. with our support, totally. to also totally. have space. I love the quote you gave from Madeleine Albright where yeah. you said that sh there's a special hell for women. No, there, is a, there, there should be a special, special, hell. special place Great in hell, hell for women who do not support women, Other and women. she's right. And she's very right, and I support that, and I'm going to be quoting that as well. Um, last but not least, this program is going out to the entire continent of Africa today. Um, what would you say to African women today? 
I would say that uh, they have inside themselves this, this wealth, this richness, this generosity, this capacity to, to trust and to and trust, to love and be loved, and that they should really feel confident as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And they should give their confidence to others around themselves. It is tough at times. Mm -hmm. uh, it is enduring. It is uh, frustrating. Mm -hmm but they should never, never give never, up. Never, give up, never give up. And what's it been like in your new position as the ND of the, of the IMF? Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here today. Never give up indeed. Thank you so much. I've really, really enjoyed my time with you today. Thank you. Same and with me. back to studio. Isn't she just amazing? I mean, I couldn't believe I was sitting next to her. I mean, you I see know. her on TV, on CNN, I even I, I get, I get <laughs> starstruck. Like, I oh know. I'm telling you, when I had to lead her in, mm -hmm. And I look at the pictures we took, yes. and I'm looking at her starstruck, <laughs> you know, saying, I'm actually Tea with Christine, Christine Lagarde, Lagarde. Yes. you know? Yes. Mm. And again, for us at Wimbis, yes. right, and we must recognize mm -hmm. um, the coordinating minister for the economy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because Auntie Ngozi okonjo yes. made it she happen. it was yes. that made mm. it happen yes. that we yes. had a, an exclusive session with her, you know, with yes. her. Yes. She's you an amazing must woman. Acknowledge she's an she's amazing another woman. woman. She invited me to Washington, D.C. to come and interview her. And really? honestly, it was, and they set up a studio there for me at the World Bank. This really? was a couple of years ago. Yes. I mean, she didn't have to. She didn't no, have she, to. she did. She did. So Christine Lagarde, uh, honestly, she's, mm. she's, she's a good woman, good woman. And, and the statement she made, there should be a special help, help. For, for all women, women that don't help other women. Yes. And there must be. Mm -hmm. Because it's our responsibility Absolutely. as women. And Absolutely. guess what? Every woman since that uh, event mm -hmm. is quoting that That's statement. Mm -hmm. Every woman. It so is that, is, that is impactful impact. enough. Totally. If that is the only thing, thing we that we take took away yes. from yes. it, yes. it should yes. be there saying, who are you helping? Yes. I'm saying it around. Mm -hmm. Who are you helping? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. What can I say? It's been an amazing afternoon with the both of you. Fun. Thank um, you very much. <laughs> thank you for inviting us no, into your energy. office to, to do this. You know, so <laughs> you still have to pay me. Yes, yes, no, it's she coming. Can dinner. Can we do dinner? We'll okay. negotiate. We'll, we'll negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. But thank you so much for watching. We hope that you have enjoyed today's episode. Please let's all remember to do our bit in empowering other women around us because together we can surely make a difference. Do have a good night.